um, that we've updated every year that um, have these broad open questions about home and community and inclusion. Uh, and this year we're gonna be um, updating those prompts to have um, a more um, youth centric prompt, like a little bit more um, uh, simpler in the language and, and the prompts. Um, and then a kind of broader uh, age range and ability uh, prompt. Uh, and then the, the new thing that we're adding this year um, to these art, um, so there's the prompts, um, they're all available for download. Anyone can download them and use them in their community. And then we have the art kits, which is um, um, includes the prompts, includes some of a fair housing curriculum, uh, includes uh, paint, um, and those can be available. Uh, you can request them through uh, uh, a request form that we've put together for you. Uh, and then this year with the art kits, we are including an activity guide. So something that we found in doing um, this project over the years, and you can see some of the submissions if you want to take some time and look at the website. Uh, we found that this, um, the sorry. art kits, uh, sorry, what's that? Okay, we found that the art kits um, have been um, most effective when there's an opportunity for facilitation. So um, we are also including a activity guide for anyone that's interested in um, facilitating this heart and home activity. And I just have to say, we had the pleasure of um, visiting the Bent Northrop Library last year, who had an incredible exhibit of work um, that kind of, um, there was, I don't know how, well, you'll hear from them later, but there's just so many submissions from young people that weren't thinking about housing in this like kind of simplistic, uh, the square with the triangle way, but really thinking about home in terms of how they connected to the space. And I just um, found that to be really powerful. On our events calendar, you can see um, we already have some events populating, including um, um, our Fair Housing Fridays, uh, they're still bare bones, but the dates are up on the calendar. And that's another way you can participate in Fair Housing Month. These are uh, panel discussions um, with not just housing folks, but different community members are engaging and thinking about housing and an opportunity for us to kind of creatively talk about housing um, outside of the, the usual housing jargon that us in the housing advocacy field kind of fall into. Uh, and, and again, we, we kind of um, invite some of our partners to bring folks to the table, um, community members, uh, folks living in affordable housing, um, and of course, uh, housing advocates. And, and it's a more niche kind of topic where we can um, dig into the specifics. And then we, again, we, we really try to make all the vocabulary uh, as, as accessible to a wide uh, variety of audience as possible, which is kind of hard to do in the housing uh, advocacy field. And then the one other thing I want to know, um, we have a lot of, of regional movement happening. So different um, uh, groups that are have really mobilized around fair housing this year in different regions of the state. And in particular, the upper uh, Connecticut Valley region or the broader Connecticut Valley region um, has had um, some really great um, uh, events kind of coming down the pipeline. Uh, and so Junction Arts Media has a redlining exhibit um, and they'll be hosting um, some films that that uh, go into the fair housing topic. So I just encourage you to uh, keep an eye on our um, our events calendar to see other ways to plug in. You know, we, of course, have the resources um, here. We see the Fair Housing Fridays and then um, we have a kind of an archive of our past uh, fair housing exhibits. Um, and so I'm new to stop presenting. I'm new to presenting on the Teams format. I think that's about it. Uh, just please um, chime in if I if I missed anything. Otherwise, I am happy to pass the mic to the next person in our webinar. Perfect. 
That was great. The only thing I would add, Corinne, is that on the art kit request form um, I, that I put the link for in the chat, you can also submit events. So uh, if your library is hosting any type of fair housing or um, inclusive communities event during April or around that time, um, please send the information to us and we'll add it to the calendar and get the word out to a broader um, to to our statewide audience. You know, that's the you know, although we're really excited to have more in person events now that the pandemic is 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 well I shouldn't say over but um you know there's the ability to have a lot more in person events which is fantastic and there are still a lot of remote events too and so with the remote events people all over the all over the state can participate so send us your events we'll add them to the calendar and we're really looking forward to um to working with you and on that note I'll just say two um one of our the most dynamic uh, moments in Fair Housing Month are, are those opportunities where there's cross sections between our housing folks, our community organizations, our libraries. So if you are hosting an event and you're wondering who should I reach out to to maybe host a discussion or a panel around uh, fair housing, please reach out to us because uh, we have a really uh, broad network all across the state and would love to get you connected to the uh, the advocates in your area. And that's all for me. So thank you very much. There is a question in the chat. If they don't have the details for the events by the time they request the kits, can they send the details after? Absolutely, yes. All right, terrific. So if you and Jess are ready, I think we're ready to move on to the librarians. So um, Sarah, could you go first? And if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and tell us what library you're from, that would be terrific. Thank you. Great, great. So you can hear me, I'm hoping? Yes. Um, great, yes. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Sarah Allerton. I'm the director of the Bent Northrop Memorial Library in Fairfield. Um, very um, tiny but uh, exciting and busy library up in the northwest corner. Um, and um, I had originally, um, when I saw this come through, I was excited about. I ordered, uh, I was about it, and I ordered um, 20 art kits of my own that I planned to just do as a, as kind of a take and make and return kind of program, kind of like the tiny art shows. Um, it was kind of back when Omicron was was just you know in that mode. Um, but um, prior to coming and being the director, I've been a librarian for. Uh, you know, well over 20 years, but I had stepped away from it for, for three years um, and I was doing social work for um, the Working Bridges program of United Way and, you know, saw firsthand that housing was, you know, by far the most pressing uh, need and issue um, with the people that I that I worked with. Um, but because I ran in those circles, um, Barry Lamke, who was with the Northwest uh, Regional Planning Commission, uh, was given my name from somebody as a potential library partner who might be also, you know, interested in the topic and and, and pushing it forward. So um, that's kind of how I got a little in deeper than my original, you know, take and make idea um, because Barry had 50 kits of his own um, that he already had. So we're like, wow, okay, a community of 1900 people. Now we've got 70 kits. How do we, you know, make this impactful? Um, so contacted the art teacher at the school. So now we've got Planning Commission, we've got library, um, school. Um, it was really short notice. I was a little worried that the art teacher's curriculum would already be pretty full, but instead he was very excited to have something to <laughs> plug into uh, to his curriculum. So he chose to do it with his third and fourth grade. So he took 50 of the kits um, and they just really kind of chose the basic prompt of um, what does home mean to you? So, um, Meanwhile, I really wanted it to be a community thing, no, not just schools. So I kept my 20 and encouraged um, uh, my community to also contribute um, and hopefully return their art. So ultimately, only one family that took those take and make kits returned. They had three small children and, and returned with those. That was a little disappointing. I was really hoping to have 50 from the school and 20 from the community for my big display. But I still had 53 pieces of art, which was... Uh, Pretty cool. So uh, the art teacher brought them back and we hung them. I will quick share my screen and um, uh, show you what those look like. So 
Is that working? Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Great. Okay. So here's a portion of them. Um, it was such a wonderful, bright, um, engaging thing to see on the walls. Um, and I just want to mention that the um, art teacher had done an example that was actually the interior of uh, his bedroom, and it was the side view of his bed with a rainbow blanket and a dog on it. <laughs> we noticed then a, a theme, um, especially like second column, third one down, um, looked very much like that. And if you're looking at, the, I know they're small, but if you're looking at them, um, there's lots of sides of beds uh, with dogs on them. Um, but also lots of really cool things. I had expected lots of exteriors when I, you know, I think if somebody said, what does home mean to you? And, you know, represent your home. I think I might, me personally, I might've thought of the outside and like the environs. Um, but many kids did choose that interior view, but some definitely did um, exteriors. Some looked at the floor plan from overhead, which was interesting. It was an interesting glimpse into the homes of these kids. Uh, discovered lots of Fairfielders have fireplaces <laughs> and <laughs> um, lots of kids have bunk beds and ceiling fans and animals. And it was just a neat way to um, have conversations uh, with the kids um, when they did come in and be like, so, you know, tell me about why you chose that. Um, this, is, this last picture is the three that came from the community members. So they were, they were small, uh, smaller, smaller, um, uh, smaller children. So, cause like I said, it was uh, third and fourth graders that had originally done that. Um, but uh, so that was, it was really um, cool and a good opportunity to also display materials about housing and home and and that sort of thing in a lot of different areas of the collection. So we have all this beautiful art up on the wall. And so we did an art show reception. It was on a Tuesday evening, six to seven, cookies, grapes, cheese and crackers kind of thing. Um, and I expected a lot of, you know, to, to have the parents at the school be like, your child's artwork is on display and there's a reception. I, I was expecting a crowd and to be really honest, it was kind of sparsely attended. I think maybe it was the same night as a basketball game or something. But they did, though, were then aware that it was at the library and many came, you know, at other times and were like, I hear there's art here and let me take a look. And then just other people coming in were just like, what's this about? So it was a great way to start conversations with people um, around a topic that you might not normally um, talk about. So, uh, unrelated, I've had another art show with seventh and eighth grade art that and tried to have an art show reception and that was also not that well attended. I guess that's just maybe not what this community want to be more and come on their own schedule. But in any case, I'm going to try that again. And COVID has hopefully um, calmed down a little bit and I'll have a little more attendance uh, this time. It's worth, it's definitely worth doing. Um, I think the art teacher this year and not in order to not repeat any of the same kids um, and is going to choose second grade and sixth grade. So that's going to be also interesting to have a little more um, uh, age diversity as far as their art skills and that sort of thing. So um, that's basically in a nutshell what we did here at Bent Northrop. I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. That was really beautiful to see, Sarah. Thank you so much. Yeah, your library is beautiful and it, just the light in it is so great for an art show and, and the really, really colorful um, paintings was just great. And I love how it, it did really make just the viewer know like what what those kids homes look like a little bit or in, and how they to see it through their eyes is really really nice so yeah. thank you does anyone have any questions for sarah i i wondered if a little bit you know that some kids you know might you know that's it's it's kind of letting somebody into a personal part of of your world um and so you know i wondered if it was a difficult assignment for some kids um so i you know but I was sensitive to that, uh, certainly when, when chatting with, with kids too. Yeah, I had that same thought too, though. There's something vulnerable about doing that, especially, you know, showing your your dog on your bed or, you know, it's a very personal kind of thing. Um, and it's, I think it speaks to the trust that they have for the art teacher and you that they did that. So that's, that's nice. Um, I do have one question, if you have any, like, takeaways for people like I know you knew Barry already from your previous work but any suggestions about if somebody wanted to do a partnership like that um I think you know it 
the the connection with with um, Barry just was really just a, a a goose for me. I don't think you necessarily need, um, you know, that that aspect of it. I think I, I it's really valuable to have close relationships. I was um, had only been on board here for about five months, and so it was a really great introduction and opportunity to connect with that art teacher. I know we we often connect with our compatriots, the school librarians, but I do think that there's you know this really cool opening um, to to have art connections too. Um, and I have discovered that art teachers are are always you know they always have so much cool work that they want to put on display, um, and that's why we've done it multiple times since so i would i would really encourage um making those those uh art connections with uh with the schools i this year i ordered my own 70 kits um and barry is going to he wasn't sure if he would um try this again with a different library um and and see if uh if we can have another place in the county doing similar things um, but yeah, I know not everybody has a lot of great display space, but even just, you know, putting things on bookcases on little, little book holders and stuff. Um, I just, it's, it, and it draws people into your library um, to be like, hey, the artwork's on display, come on in and see it. It might be somebody that doesn't typically use the library um, in other ways, and it can be a great. Yeah, that's such a great point. And I'm always thinking about, you know, the really small libraries and just, I don't know if anyone on this call is at a really small library that doesn't have display space but you could also do something like this and it could be the library's art show that's on display in another space so um, that's another great way to make connections and do programming off-site that's still connected to the library so all right thank you very much and this partnership thing i think is a great segue into amy olson and so amy if you want to introduce yourself and tell us about some of the work that you've done that would be great sure um, I'm Amy Olson. I'm the director of the Lanfer Memorial Library in Hyde Park. And when I was thinking about libraries celebrating and promoting Fair Housing Month, I started to think about um, over the years, the Lanfer Library has participated in book discussions and displays in the Heart to Home Art Kits, uh, Story Walk programs, but sort of some of the benefits that have happened because we have been celebrating Fair Housing Month leading to new resources and new partnerships in our community. So first of all, the Landfair Library is located directly across from the Lamoille County Courthouse. And so in the past and now, but in the past before I had these resources or knew about the Fair Housing Project um, and the Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development, um, folks would come in and say, you know, my landlord is suing me or I'm, I want to take my landlord to court and do you have resources? And we had like an outdated NOLO legal guide about tenants rights or something like that. So now I have better resources to help those folks um, by being able to refer them to the experts. And, um, and also because I am, I think that libraries are natural partners for almost every organization in the community. When I think about celebrating Fair Housing Month and promoting it, I would always reach out to local partners and I learned who they were and I didn't know um, several years ago before we started promoting Fair Housing Month. So the Lamoille Housing Partnership and the United Way of Lamoille County has a working communities challenge. I think almost every um, United Way in the state has gotten a grant for what they call working communities challenge. Each community has a different goal. Um, surrounding that grant and that work, but in Lamoille County, one of their top priorities was housing. So, um, and also we are, the Lanfer Library is less than a minute walk from the local um, homeless shelter, which is open from November to April, soon to be open year round. Anyway, um, so reaching out to these different organizations and saying, hey, we're promoting fair housing, do you have any programs available? Are you doing anything special? Are there some issues that we could highlight in our displays, in our work? And so I've been able to create those stronger partnerships with other organizations. And then they flipped it on me because last year, um, the Lamoille Housing Partnership and the United Way's Working Communities Challenge had a housing summit. Um, and the, they asked me to moderate a panel on the first day of the summit. And the folks who were on that panel were um, 
someone, uh, an administrator from Capstone Community Action, the director of the Lamoille Economic Development Corporation, the town administrator for Johnson, Vermont, and the town manager for Stowe, Vermont, the director of the Lamoille Planning Commission, and a representative from the Lamoille Area Board of Realtors. And after the panel section, which was very well scripted and I didn't have to work too terribly hard on my moderator role, um, every one of the panelists came up to me at the break after the panel section and talked to me about public libraries and, um, and how it connects in the work that they do. So the director of Lamoille Economic Development Corporation was talking about how he really never thought before about how libraries can help promote healthy economy in communities. Um, and I was able to highlight, spotlight my colleagues, Jean Engel um, from the Johnson Public Library to her town administrator and Cindy Weber from the Stowe Free Library to her town manager. So there were some really great successes. And the fellow from the um, Lamoille Area Board of Realtors um, talked to me a lot about how people look for uh, houses in towns where there are public libraries. So that was kind of exciting to um, make those connections. And it, it's coming full circle um, because um, because also part of that summit, the second part of it was um, small group sections ultimately to come up with um, to come up with five areas that the community, the Lamoille Housing Partnership and the um, Working Communities Challenge could pinpoint and put into action plans. Um, so each small group could brainstorm to their heart's content, dream about the most um, crazy ideas. All those crazy ideas were put on boards. And then by the end, the over 100 participants got to put a sticky note on their top five favorite. And those were the top five um, vote getters. One of those, one of those priorities um, for Lamoille region to focus on to better meet needs was increasing community support for affordable housing, fair housing, and homeless shelter projects through education. So here's where the full circle happens because I was kind of sitting there going, well, that's what we're doing at the library by promoting fair housing month. So, um, so I think that that's uh, pretty important work that we're doing without even sort of realizing, realizing it. Um, and I also just wanted to mention one thing that I learned at the um, summit, which was last spring, was rather than calling it affordable housing, to call it attainable housing, because a lot of times there's a stigma attached and people think it's just um, poor folks who can't afford to find a house and get a job and pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality. But if we call it attainable housing, it's sort of like the American dream that everybody wants to attain a safe and affordable place to live. And I think that's all I have for right now. Just sort of those trickle down effects of um, of working and supporting Fair Housing Month. That's really great, Amy. Thank you so much. Um, it, it seems like that's an example of like exactly what we would hope would happen from you know this partnership between the Department of Libraries and CVOEO. And um, so I think it's just really great to um, you know hear it actually in action like that. And I know it had a lot to do with, you know, the community engagement that you've been doing for years, you know, that, um, but it's, it, it took on the fair housing aspect of it, which does seem like that was newish for you a few it years It was ago, newish, so. but it wasn't, right? Like we were right down the road from the homeless shelter. So those issues are here in libraries all the time. And, yeah. you know, I really think about folks who come into the library and it's not just because we're across from the courthouse libraries all over the state, right? Who are talking about um, the folks who are coming in and talking about their trusting us with their stories and their issues that they're having. But also, um, I think that all public libraries are natural community partners for any any organization in the community because we do serve everybody regardless of who they are or where they are in life. And so I think that we are the ideal community partners anyway. So it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Does anybody have questions for Amy or any of the people that have spoken so far? Or comments about what you've heard or seen? 
Um, I'm curious, we were going to um, invite attendees to um, share if they have done anything in the past around fair housing or if they hope to this year. Joy, I just wanted to interrupt you yeah. for a second because mm -hmm. Corinne put something in the um, chat where Lamoille oh, um, River Arts sure. Center is having um, an exhibit right now, I think, um, through June called Home and How We Make It. So that's in our community here in Lamoille County. And um, I'm so sorry to interrupt that, but I wanted to also say that um, Corinne and Jessica did a program virtually for the Landfair Library one time about tenants' rights, and it was fascinating. And I learned a lot from that as well. So, um, and one thing that I just have to brag is that I also was asked to be on the board of the local um, homeless shelter, the Lamoille Community House. And they're going to be announcing this week that a property has been um, secured and they're going to have a around the year instead of just being open for a few months in the winter a year-round um, shelter that can house more people so that is really great great work congratulations um so jess and corinne i have a question if you could um talk about that that kind of opportunity what amy just mentioned um for things that maybe some from your staff yourselves or someone else could do at libraries either virtually or in person sure yeah we're always happy to either come in person or do vir virtual trainings on um, on fair housing related issues uh, and also on um, tenants rights and responsibilities. So we have a series of workshops through our Vermont tenants program that include um, uh, tenant skills, which is everything any everything a renter needs to know um, and and we also have a workshop on finding housing uh, and a and a new, a new well it's actually a new old workshop it's something that used to be used to be offered as a partnership with our financial futures program it was on hiatus for a while and it's finally back um, which is sustaining the rent which is the, the financial side of of tenant skills um, and we offer these workshops both um, as live live in-person workshops live zoom webinars and then we also have 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 most of them on demand online so people can actually just go through and and do the workshop on their own on their own time at their own pace um, and we also have uh, both the ten, uh, vermont tenant uh, sorry the tenant skills and finding housing workshops as recorded videos in right now five different languages and we're working on five more so uh, language access is really important a really critical piece of our work to make sure that everyone can have equitable access to this really important information and so we've been working to expand both our printed materials and have more translations available but also um, have the videos available for for folks whose english who, who may not have english as a first language um, so so reach out to us we we have limited capacity in terms of being able to be everywhere all the time but we have an amazing education and outreach team and we love in-person visits especially to libraries and corinne feel free to add anything i've missed yeah i was just gonna add too if um the workshops um we are we're offering verbally or you see on our website it's not um quite what you're looking for, again, please reach out to us. We are in conversations with our friends in the Windsor area about having maybe a more um, broader uh, conversation about inclusive housing, um, just to kind of um, warm the community up to some of um, these um, new housing developments that um, are much needed in the community, but uh, maybe uh, folks have, um, as Amy said, some assumptions about what ki what the um, kinds of housing serve kinds of people, um, and so it's really important to us for um, for us and a big part of what uh, we're doing for Fair Housing Month to kind of broaden the vocabulary of of how we talk about housing and and what housing looks like and. Uh, oftentimes, you're the people seeing um, the needs of your community and 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 what those um, unique challenges are. And so again, just feel free to uh, reach out to us. And excellent news, uh, Amy, about the the up and coming uh, houseless shelter. Thank you for your work um, advocating for for um, inclusive housing in your community. I'm really glad to hear too that you are already in touch with River Arts and and you know about this excellent exhibit coming up. Thanks. Are any of the librarians on the call, does anybody have anything they want to share about anything they've done related to this topic or are hoping to do this year?
All right. Well, you can keep thinking about it. If you think of something, we can always fit you in. And I'd like to um, ask Jamie Bauer now to talk about a special opportunity she has for libraries. Thank you, Jamie, for being here. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, my name is Jamie. I'm with the Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development. Just for a quick background, um, the state of Vermont receives CDBG funds or Community Development Block Grant funds from HUD. And um, as part of receiving these funds, we need to and want to uh, do updated um, fair housing plans every five years. We are working on a comprehensive plan now. So there's a couple of opportunities we're hoping to talk to you guys about. One is that we have a statewide survey out where we're wanting to reach as many people as possible. We have it online. I'm also sending you a link um, to a flyer with a QR code that you can print out. We would love to hear from absolutely everybody. Um, the data that we get from these surveys will be combined with um, data from the Census Bureau and other items where we can help uh, shape policy and budgets, budgeting and spending um, on housing based on the community, community input. Um, another opportunity that I've been working most recently with Joy and Jeanette um, are doing some simple meet and greets at libraries where we are, we'll be there with the table, um, our information on fair housing, opportunities about the survey, hopefully having a nonprofit in the community who can talk about their housing resources. So stay tuned, there'll be some outreach. I'm also gonna put in my email, so please feel free to reach out to me um, and let me know if you have any questions and thank you. Great, thank you for that. And um, we did already, or we are sharing out this Friday, I think about this in our digest. Um, I forget um, exactly which day it, it went in. That goes out twice a week. So, um, and you can also get back in touch with us. I put the link to the Fair Housing Month website page for the Department of Libraries. So if if you're not writing all this down and maybe have forgotten, um, or, you know, you can always go back to that page and get the links and they'll link to the um, CVOEO um, Fair Housing Project things as well. So yeah, Jeanette confirms that it is going out Friday about this information. Um, so does anyone have any other questions, comments? I'm going to put a link to an evaluation for this in the chat. And I just want to say as we're wrapping up that, you know, April is Fair Housing Month, but every month is Fair Housing Month. So, you know, if you can't think of something to do it by April, because that's not that far away, it's certainly always a good topic any time of year. So um, keep that in mind as well. Oh, and Joy, if I could pipe in too, mm -hmm. did you want to talk a little bit about the web page and, the, and how, how, to, how, how the libraries can request the book sets and the story walks? As well. Oh, yes. So on that page that I shared, um, there are um, links to um, we have circulating story walks that can go out and we also have book sets um, on two books that are related to this um, that we did a few years ago um, and they come with discussion questions as well. So you can request those for your library and host a discussion. Um, and they, we, as I said, there are links on our website page to all of the links for the art kits and, and the event calendar as well. And as always, if you, you know, can't remember this, just get in touch with one of us. There's several of us at the department working, you know, involved with this project. So just get in touch with someone here and we will either be able to answer it or point you to someone who can, so. Okay, anything else? I really appreciate this partnership. I feel like it grows every year, Jess. So it's um, really been learning a lot from it and appreciative of the partnership with you all. And then also thank you so much to the panelists who shared your work and Jamie for your work that you're gonna do to get the word out to libraries more. And with that, I will stop the recording.